breaking news this morning. General Colin Powell has passed away at the age of 84. His family releasing that news. The family says the general died of COVID complications. Um, let's bring in Del Walters uh, right now, our newsman. Del, you covered him for so many years. Uh, I'm sure you did interviews with him, um, but just a remarkable journey he took. And I wonder if you can take us through it because we're also shocked, 84 years old, but no one was expecting this. Mm -hmm. No one was expecting it. And I think that's what has taken this city by storm. The fact that no one saw this coming. Colin Powell was always the person that you thought was always going to be there, no matter what, thick and thin. Mm -hmm. uh, he was here with us during Desert Storm. He was always that constant pressure, uh, 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 presence rather, of a more sane Washington, a Washington mm -hmm. that, if you will, was the exact opposite of the last five years. When everybody else was being bombastic, Colin Powell was always being measured. When everybody was being Republican, Colin Powell said, I'll be a Democrat. When everybody else was hawking war, Colin Powell was hawking peace. He was the constant voice in Washington, D.C. For, for two generations, one that went back to Desert Storm and Desert Shield and, and Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf. And remember the Powell Doctrine, which said that you overwhelm them with, with military force, but you also make sure that you know what you want to do when you go into a battle something that if we had heeded that advice when we went into Afghanistan, perhaps we wouldn't have been there for 20 years, but it will leave an, an incredible hole in this city because he was always the voice of reason during times of insanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about that because uh, it's so well respected and the nation has been so divided for so many years. Uh, Republicans and Democrats are obviously a long time Republican, but uh, also very instrumental in helping uh, Barack Obama uh, get into the White House and his endorsement there. But always, no matter who you uh, were on, whatever side, Republican or Democrat, you loved and you seem to respect Colin Powell. And he often talked about holding on to that respect. If you think about it, the low point in his own career was when he went before the United Nations and talked about those weapons of mass destruction that we found out mm -hmm. didn't exist. He felt that he put his own honor on the line for the country and he let the country down. Not that he let himself down, but that he let the country down. When Barack Obama was running for president, he broke ranks with the Republican Party and said, I'm going to vote for this man, not only because he's black, but because he's good. You know, um, that was something that no one thought. And imagine, if you will, that at the height of his popularity, he could have run for president and decided not to mm -hmm. because his wife almost said that that wasn't something that she wanted to get involved in. And in retrospect, she was the wiser of the two because sometimes you have to look at the Oval Office and say some things just aren't worth it. And in the case of Colin mm -hmm. Powell in the White House, you can imagine with the mud being slung right now at politicians he would have found out the hard way that, that America changed underneath of him. Yeah. So I want to talk about um, the rise. I believe Colin mm. Powell was, was born to Jamaican immigrants and that instilled, they instilled this something in him that made him wade through all of these racist waters and everything else that came with it and really rise. Can you talk a little bit about um, his upbringing and how he got there? Mm -hmm. Colin Powell was black. He mirrored black mm -hmm. America, if you think about it. I mean, how many times in history do we look back and realize that African Americans have been the compass of this nation since day one? Yeah. You know, you can go back to the times of Frederick Douglass saying that, you know, this July 4th is not your July 4th. You can even look now to the present day manifestation of the January 6th committee and Benny Thompson, where black America is often called on to be the moral co conscious of this country, and Colin Powell was that. And like I said, at a time when people were talking about war and more war, Colin Powell was talking about why are we here and what do we want to achieve? Mm -hmm. And after we've achieved it, what do we want to do? You know, the administration of George H.W. Bush was often criticized for not storming into Iraq. Um, and yet his son did so. And look at what that produced. It produced what we now know to be mm -hmm. ISIS. It produced what we now know to be Afghanistan out of control. 20 years of endless wars. Colin Powell was more measured. 
Um, and I think that comes from the African-American experience of understanding that the world is comprised of a lot of different minorities. And it is those <coughs> minorities that understand if we don't get, a, get along, in other words, we all swim together or we all sink together. And I think Colin Powell, because of his background, both of growing up in the islands, you know, parents of, of, of immigrants, but also being part of that bigger island, New York, and understanding that mm -hmm. somehow we all have to get together in this experiment that we call America. Because if you look at history through the eyes of a soldier, you can see what happens when we don't. Yeah, Del, From Holland. We, we have, go ahead, Mike. No, he's he's from Harlem, uh, and I think we have the yeah. Facebook post. I think we have the uh, the statement actually from his family. Uh, we want to read that for you, uh, if we can put that on the screen. Uh, do we have it? Here it is. Uh, this is from uh, the Facebook page. Uh, General Colin L. Powell, former U.S. Secretary of State, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, passed away this morning due to complications from COVID nineteen. Fully vaccinated, we want to thank the medical staff at Walter Reed National Medical Center for their care and treatment. We have lost a remarkable and loving husband, father, grandfather, and a great American. That is coming from the Powell family. You see that legacy there as a loving family man. But it's also the first national black national security advisor. Uh, he was joint chief of staff back mm -hmm. in the day, chairman. Uh, when I served in the military, first black secretary of state, which would... You know, kind of like you mentioned, there'll be a little bit of a blot on his record that he uh, uh, regretted because of some of the, uh, the the intelligence issues there. But when overall you look back at Colin Powell's history, which he could have, like you said, run for president and, and possibly uh, been one of the leading contenders back in the day. What do you think his overall legacy? How do, how do you think we're going to look back on, on Colin Powell's legacy uh, when it's all said and done? I think we will see Colin Powell as the man who embodied what America is supposed to be, what America can be, what America should be, and what America strives to be. I, I think all of us would wonder if we would measure up to the image that Colin Powell set forth. In other words, not only someone who, who got it right, but also someone who got it wrong and, and wasn't afraid to admit that he got it wrong. If you look at Washington as a city where the currency is power, no one had more power than Colin Powell, and yet no one wielded it better than Colin Powell. Um, he was somebody that if you ran into him on the streets, he would engage in a conversation with you, not because he was looking down at you, but because he wanted to know, what did you think? Uh, he was one of those people in Washington that is so rare, and that's what made him so powerful. Um, think about what it is that the currency was that he had in his pocket at any given moment to be on any given board at any given time and yet when you talk about people that wield power in this in this city he was the one person whose name never came up as being the person that threw it about uh wasn't the person mm -hmm. that put it in your face wasn't the person that was always talking about do you know who i am or what i did you can imagine Colin Powell, if you if you will being told that there wasn't a restaurant table available and him saying well, can I come back later? I think Colin Powell would be measured because he was what America wants to be, and he was the embodiment of what it can be. And I think that's one of the reasons we always looked up to him. Well, mm -hmm. Dell, um, and, you know, I, I do, and I have apprehension, right? Because as we discuss this measured man, as you called him, and honor Colin Powell, the family statement, um, beautiful, you know, announcing that he passed and announcing what he meant to them, I have apprehension because this measured man who did not allow his message to be co-opted or misused in any way, the fact that he was fully vaccinated, died of COVID complications. I, I, it's too soon, but I see what's coming here. And I wonder um, how that can be covered, how that can be handled. Um, with the family being so transparent that these things happen um, because we know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. What's interesting to me is in that statement, he was being treated at Walter Reed. Washington is a sieve mm -hmm. of information leaking out of just about every possible avenue. And yet here you have someone of Colin Powell's stature who goes to Walter Reed and no mm -hmm. one says anything. That was the respect for him. And the fact that, that the statement there says we've lost a remarkable and loving husband, father, grandfather. 
and a great American. Nothing about he led yeah. this or he did that or, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much of, of Washington is, is the vanity wall, the plaques that are there, the photographs that you have. And yet Colin Powell was probably one of two people that you would want to interview mm -hmm. because you wanted to know what was he really like? Um, he was yeah. one of those people that in this town, he was an anathema, and that's saying an awful lot. I, I mean, imagine, if you will, you can't define him, and that's what makes it so interesting. Everybody else you can define. Colin Powell's that one person that you could not because he was just himself, and that is the rarest of beings in Washington. And on your hey, thoughts, by the way, about, about how him? this will translate into COVID, yeah, yeah I was mm -hmm. just going to say uh, yeah. how this would translate into COVID. I think that that, that, that shark has been jumped um, between insanity and sanity. Mm -hmm. The numbers speak for themselves. 97% of people right. that have the shot don't die. That means the 3% do. Yeah. And that means that he was part of that 3%. And that's the only way that you can look at it from a factual standpoint. There will be people that will run mm -hmm. with it and say, see, I told you the vaccine didn't work. But to quote Colin Powell, he would probably say those are just damn fools. And, yes. and they also Amen. have to Amen. look at the age is a factor. He was 84 years old, and we also know how COVID can affect uh, older uh, people uh, more so than younger people as well. That's why they are eligible for the booster shots. But we're not going to make it political right now because I know that's going to come. That's all going to be a part of it. But as far as this man right now, uh, I, I just keep hearing what you're saying about him, Dell, And I, I know what he meant to me as a military man, but what he meant to do this as a black man in Washington yeah. to be revered and respected that way, that, that has a, a significance as well. I think he is the black experience in Washington. And I, and I have said this since day one, and I used to get in trouble for saying it, which is that what would America be without black men and women, to tell you the truth? I mean, mm -hmm. look at where we have Amen. been in history, the Barbara Jordans, the Cole and Powells of the world. I mentioned Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman. This nation doesn't want to reckon with its past because its past is painful. It is African-Americans that say to America, it is okay to reckon with that past because we go to church on Sunday and those churches preach forgiveness, so we forgive you. We just don't want you to forget what you've done and so that we can move forward, not so that we can punish you, moving forward so that we can become a better nation or as, as they always say uh, that 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 the better angels among us that shining city on the hill even if you quote Ronald Reagan Colin Powell was someone that that caused us to want to aspire to be and Mike as you mentioned it Colin he Powell did. I mean imagine these mm -hmm. days what general does any soldier want to be like who do you want to be like these days that's in the military right. or for that matter in politics